The scene of the Gadolin is about the survival of a Celtic people which is under attack. And that, of course, is a recurring scene throughout the whole of Welsh language literature. The Gadolin is like a boulder which has been left after the Ice Age, sitting on, on this pinnacle. I like that because it's very solid image, but it also has a potential of movement and a potential of dynamism in it. The Godolin is a is a heroic elegy, composed probably in the, in the Godolin territory in northern Britain in, in southern Scotland, about the year six hundred. It celebrates the uh, war band of the Godolin tribe, which uh, were sent to attack the Angles at Catrice or Catterick in Yorkshire, about that date, by Manadog Muindraur, the uh, king or leader of the Godolin, whose seat was at Edinburgh. The 300 men were trained for a year by Manadog and feasted at the site of Edinburgh Castle now. And in the battle, in the event, they were overwhelmed. They were all killed by the, by the enemy. And Aileen uh, escaped. He, he was there as an onlooker, but he escaped um, from the battle and wrote the famous poem called The Good Army. I think we chose the poem first because um, it's such a, a great piece of of literature and it's the, the earliest Welsh poem and so on and everybody was attracted to that the solidity of it it started off with Liz showing me an English translation of the poem Cadodin, and she began to enthuse about it, and, and particularly about the original and what it felt like to be a Welsh person now, um, understanding chunks of the poem, but not all of it, and there's a certain mystery in that. <laughs> Godolin itself doesn't tell a story. Uh, it was impossible to, to, to follow a narrative uh, in the poem. It's simply 
blocks of text which play an essential part within the makeup of the fabric of the performance. Gwyr da aeth y traeth dan y wawr. Cynt i waith lawr, nog i dinith iawn. Cynt i fwyd brain, nog i ar gyfrain. Blas fedd eu hamgwyn, a gwenwyn fi. Tri chant eir dorthog, gwneud gael gweno. Sein iesyd eu glebu, am hen mamau. Ac ail trwm trian gennyf eu gweled, dy gwyddaw ein gwir neu ben o draed. When you go back to texts which are of the medieval period, they are pre-enlightenment. They're not rational, rationalist texts. They're not tidy stories with a beginning, a middle, and an end. But the storyline is there. It's about uh, the experience of defeat and death in war, and also about the experience of what happens to a people which can become devastated and conquered. Breath Gorf are particularly concerned in explaining what being in Wales means, um, being part of a Welsh culture means. They use a lot of music, song, physical work to express that. I'm always Kant and Ariel and Mendut. A Gwarchan Nab Dwebai, Gza Urit, Poet Gno and Internal Truth. I think it's very significant that uh, Priestgrove have worked with various marginalized uh, groups in they work in Poland, they were working with students, opposition groups, before the changes we've seen recently in Central Europe. And their work in Wales certainly has been oppositional work, uh, not just on, on the peace issue, but also their piece on the coal industry, which was uh, about the effects of capitalism on the Welsh community and the development of working class resistance to it. You don't need a background in theatre to understand what they're doing. And I found that many of the performances are better understood by people who haven't been spoiled by too much uh, naturalistic type theatre. <laughs> was in contact with Test Department and really wanted to work with them and they were getting interested in working with us and then the two ideas came together and um, Mike felt that this was definitely the subject for, for working with Test Department and it gave us a vehicle for working on the poem musically. <laughs> for doing events in locations of this sort and also because we have a strong Celtic street running through the music we've had our own piper for the last four years so uh, I suppose we were probably the only appropriate people in Britain to try and bring a poem like this alive to actually try and give truth to a bit of history and make it live for people again Department who in Godolphin put in fact it's perfect. 
he had to say something new and exciting about an old poem. department's work that goes back into far history and is also very modern at the same time so we might use animal horns that could have been used around the time of the battle and yet we will also use industrial percussion that is discarded within the last five ten years so it brings it right up to date as well and I think that in a sense interested uh, Reith Goff I think it's not without some kind of irony that we first staged the, uh, the Godin in the Rover car factory. What they asked me to do is to create an environment within a factory. What I tried to do was to bring those external materials inside and to use them in ways which sat easily alongside the factory I mean, we have rows of columns we have rows of roof lights of one kind or another and so instead of bringing trees in for instance and arranging them informally or organically in some kind of way i decided that it was very important the trees were very a row of trees two rows of trees an avenue of trees very very simple a circle a perfect circle of sand there was going to be a perfect cone of a mountain of sand um, by the time the, pro the project finishes, by the time the performance finishes, there's a perfect circle of water. Those are the kinds of geometrical ideas that are behind the thing. The first thing that we've been interested in and excited by with Gododin is that we're able to use phenomena that you wouldn't see within a theatre at all. But also, um, you have a much, much closer and quite dangerous contact um, with the audience uh, in Gadolin as well, and that's very exciting. Because they use unusual spaces for their um, performances, they're able then to make statements through images in a context which really is very electric. I, mean, I think everybody, whenever they experience a brief go performance, is somehow changed.
lost Gadali. They've gone. They're now disappeared from the face of the earth. This poem by Nadine is about that particular loss. It reflects something which happened so long ago, um, but yet it has relevance for us today. It's the energy to the end of, of a people. which the war wagon is told by the performers. The war wagon is a way of really bringing, bringing the performers together into the arena. It's told down here and the uh, members of the band are playing the war wagon as it comes in to a backing tape. It's uh, lit by television from this side of the road here and Alan and I are carrying flaming torches. So it's a very dim silhouette that people see. The people are already down in the quarry, um, so they're looking up at us.
I mean, space like this has got an enjoyable room. So if the atmosphere is created, I would say. Probably more on the edge of this night, actually. More of a tension about it. I certainly felt that way. It's sort of always sort of struggling to keep up. Last night wasn't easy, but it was more technically bad. Tonight wasn't as technically as good for us anyway. The performers, I think, were better. It's the best performing experience of my career, I think. Um, it's extremely arduous, but I think the rewards for the performer are very, very great. Um, you just feel part of an enormous thing. Uh, it's very difficult, I suppose, to to identify precisely your, your own little part in it, but you know you are some part of something very large. Um, and it bowls you along, so that although you're exhausted within 10 minutes, um, by the end, you really feel that you've achieved something. I'm quite proud of what we've achieved. I'm still always just amazed by this, this space, for this to be a theatre. Uh, it's such an incredible location to actually be a theatre. Uh, it's quite unique. I mean, I don't know if we'll find somewhere as good as this again. I'm sure it'll be very different in, in Germany and in Holland. It's a very different feeling here from, from the Cardiff show. That's quite in, it's an interesting sort of point to see how different countries have different temperaments and different reactions to, to what you're doing. performed in England, uh, largely because nobody's asked us, but on every occasion it's been quite a, quite a difficult experience. Um, also, interestingly, in Germany recently it was also quite difficult uh, in that some of the images that the, um, that the show throws up, deriving from national myths, have quite a different kind of meaning and reverberation in Germany, for instance. One criticism, for example, in Germany was that Godalving, the images of Godalving, glorifies war. And um, I think if you don't take the other contexts, the cultural contexts of a piece like Godalving, then it's easy to get those oversimplifications. It was only when we pointed out to them, well, actually, Godalving is not about people winning wars, it's about people losing wars. People began to say, yes, that's unusual. We, we would need to know more about the culture to understand that. Audiences were very free to interpret our, you know, the, the nationalism or the, the sense of nationhood, national identity, which came over. They were free to, to interpret that in any way they chose. Nationalism is a very difficult concept because it is used to describe expansionism and building up the strength of a nation state to attack others and to assert that from my country, or my nation is, 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 the, is the best and all this stuff that you hear uh, very often in, in, in Britain. But the other side of it is nationalism or national identity or nationism perhaps, but there's a better word than nationalism, uh, where people see themselves as belonging to a particular group, but see that they as a group are exactly the same as all kinds of other groups. And those groups together make up humankind. But humankind's experience is through the diversity of these groups. So it's a nationalism or a nationism which rejects xenophobia, which doesn't attack the foreigner, uh, which is very often a hallmark of nationalism, and doesn't draw its strength from the strength of the state, but from a sense of the civil society, the community, and the culture as being the important things in the life of the nation. <laughs>
the Dothing tribe were under actual threat of extermination, and they were exterminated in the year 638. Edinburgh was overwhelmed by the, by the Angles, and they were either killed or driven as exiles to the western um, kingdom of, of Glasgow, or Strathclyde, you see. It was a question of, of physical, physical uh, survival at that time. It's not quite the same today, but uh, there is, of course, a, a similarity and a continuation. The buildings that we worked in, um, in Cardiff, in Hamburg, um, and in Scotland, in Glasgow, were all places which had been industrial areas, which had had many um, men working in there. There was a whole industry built around those kinds of places. Working class people would rather go along to a factory. I mean, even if it's just to see, maybe your dad worked there, or you worked there, your brother worked there, just to see what it's like nowadays, you know, like, uh, and you can see what it's like and you can see what they've done with it. I think that idea of taking theatre out of theatres and putting performances into an industrial or a working space is absolutely great. Have you seen any Viscose uh, productions before? No, I've never seen any of them. Did you come because of the test department, or are you simply here on and off chance? Um, well, I for a long time see test department, not so like the building. You know, building yeah. is. You're local then? Right? Ah, I said he's in the corner. He's got it uh, go ahead in the car. I think it's really, really good. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. 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 I mean, obviously, we're, we're interested in test departments. Fascinated by the good dozen anyway, as a historian. Right. So I'm interested in that sort of dimension. See, you see the political continuity of the piece there. It's perhaps nationalistic, or it could be yeah. seen as nationalistic, yeah, certainly. That's fine. What are you expecting from the performance? Are you expecting any radical sort of departs from usual theatre? Or... I hope that it will be radical, but that's what we've been led to believe. And uh, given this has toured Europe, I think it's an excellent to have the opportunity to come up to Scotland, which is the context of the Godolphin anyway. The lady, he sang this. Are the little Danny come on of me? Turtam, a tharan, a reverdy. Gurit are their folk, a folk whiskey. Rid bedel, rebel, of Eileen. A fitting song for a noble host. The sound of fire and flood tide. Excelling in courage, a horseman in the turmoil. A blood shedding reaper, he longed for war.
enjoy the performance. I'm still a bit um, stunned by it. Yeah, I'm just a bit stunned. Yeah, the performance is just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you think it's important that this sort of thing takes place in the Celtic nations? If you regard the Celtic fringes as a fringe, the fringes actually taking over from the centre because I think the centre is killed by its own cynicism, its own superficiality, by its own trendy trendiness, its own fashionability, its inability to feel anything as powerfully felt as that piece was. And I, in the end, I think it's something about, it says something about feeling. I mean, if that doesn't sort of scratch the blood, nothing will. You know. Kawarain Ketwe, Kawarviant, Igid an Ian Vreed, at Gerhassant, Beer Rehoidel, Heer Rehoid are a current, Scythe the Mount Oloigros, Alla the Sunt, Gwraga gwyddw a wneithant. Llawer mawr a'i deifwr ar ei hamrant. says as much about war and its universality as it does about Celtic resistance. It is about war and unfortunately that's a thing which every single nation uh, has an experience of. Last night I noticed I was struck remarkably so by the amount of young people there who have had no experience of war except what they've seen on television or read in books. And the way the drama was portrayed last night, particularly with the use of the set, and the lights and the music, brought home the real terror of what the battle was about. I mean, I was very moved myself. I could see the terror in the actor's face as they were being slaughtered. And that, to me, is one way of bringing home the futility of war. Taking the long view of the performance, it's saying that if you don't stand up and fight for what you believe in, what's important to you, whatever your situation, you're not going to survive. So um, I don't think anybody working on the performance is glorifying war, but we are showing through the metaphor of a battle what, what people have fought battles for through the centuries.